So let's talk about how I hired a sex worker as a living nanny and I had absolutely no idea. I'm going to do this while I do my makeup. It was shared with me by a friend, but I'm going to be narrating it as if it's my story just so it's much easier. Make sure you stay till the end so you let me know what you think and see if what my friend did was right or wrong. My ear don't hear something. I don't hear something. Like, I can't even believe this story I'm sharing with you, but believe me, it's 100% true, 100% facts. No lies were told, no exaggeration. I'm literally sharing the story as it was told to me. My baby had just turned one year old and I had just found out I was pregnant again. I was already two months gone and I was very sick, like extreme morning sickness. I was actually diagnosed with extreme morning sickness by a doctor and I could barely get anything done. My husband used to work from home when we had our first baby, but right now he has an office job and so he has to leave the house every day. So I found myself alone and my previous nanny had already left in December, she didn't have scorn. She had told me she was going to leave and she did leave and she never came back. So I was really, really struggling. Honestly, I deliberated about doing it alone, but it was just too difficult. And so I reached out to my agent. I had told him that I need someone to just help me out and I already have a one-year-old baby and the agent was the same person that helped me with the previous nanny so I trusted that he was going to find me someone compatible. About two weeks passed, my agent calls me to tell me that there's someone available but immediately my heart sunk. I said, ha, what do you mean but? He said, well, you see, I had asked for someone who was in her mid-twenties. In my experience, even from my parents' house, I knew that people in their 20s are better nannies overall than people younger than 21 at least and so he knew this but he told me he knew the family well and i had no worries i said okay how old is she you won't be ready for this you won't be prepared for this she's an adult she just turned 18 but i know you already said you don't want a teenager or a child so i don't know if you accept this but please just know i know her family well he basically just assured me that he knew her family well and nothing was going to go wrong Basically, in her experience, everyone that was under 18 or even less than 20 still had a little bit of wildness in them. Like they just wanted their freedom. They wanted to just leave their parents' house and just, you know, meet boys and stuff like that. And so she said she really didn't like working with people under that age just because maybe it's her opinion from her mother's house, but she just felt like, oh, it doesn't always end well, you know? Well, she adamantly refused. After much conviction, she actually agreed since, you know, she was desperate and she had limited options. According to her, the first month was actually okay. It wasn't as bad as she thought it would be. The girl was doing all the chores she was supposed to. If she heard the baby crying, she would come and help out. She cleaned just like a couple times a week, but she already had the cleaner that would come and clean the house. So that wasn't expected for, of her on the daily. She just needed to maintain the house. She really gelled with the girl, like it was really nice, according to her. And they were living happily until... <laughs> gang, 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 gang. The problem first started when her phone broke down. So she was using this really old phone and one day it broke down. Like, oh, well, not a problem. She's been doing so well. I can probably just buy her a good quality phone. So I bought her a phone, a really good Infinix phone. And the girl was so excited, almost so excited. She kept thanking me, telling me how I had literally just made her life and she really needed a phone. But obviously her parents couldn't afford one and she had just finished school. So she knew that she had to work first to even raise money for school. And so like a phone was just not a priority at this point you know yeah that's normal now imagine a year old girl a really good nice phone of course she will appreciate it but then because of this new phone every time this girl be on her phone i was contemplating making a rule about her being on the phone anytime she's carrying the baby so i found myself like every time yelling about the phone i myself when i carry my baby i'm not always on my phone you get like sometimes yes it's normal to be on your phone but like i'm not going to leave my baby mindlessly be pressing phone so one day, one day, Kassala bust. It seems I ended up buying problem with my own money. Like how crazy is that? I legit actually bust problem with my own money. I didn't think the phone was a big deal because I mean, it's motivation to work. You would think, oh, if I'm treating this girl well, then she'll be really excited to work with me. If, she, if I can buy her a phone, she'll know that there's definitely more in store for her. She'll carry my baby with her whole mind, you know? In my head, that's how I thought it would go, but that's not actually how it went. In her head, it was actually something she could use to sell her market more and, you know, sell herself better online. Ah, this auntie does not know what she had done for me. By the third month, I noticed that this girl is always sleepy. Like, 
as if she'd not sleep in the night, always trying to sleep, like during the day, not just during nap time. Because normally when my daughter is sleeping, she too should sleep, and me too I would sleep because again I was just nearly pregnant and I was very very sleepy, like and I was always vomiting. I didn't have strength, you know. If she's not sleeping, she's pressing phone. I started to question myself: Did I make a mistake? I even deliberately telling my husband to speak to her just because I didn't want it to seem like I was being a bit harsh. Why I really started to get worried was when I realized that she was actually ignoring my call. And like when I yell out her name, she will ignore my call and I'll get closer and I'll find out that she's on the phone. And a lot of times I found out that she was with my baby, like maybe in their room or in the playroom. And yeah, my baby will be crying and she was answering call or pressing phone. That's where it really started to get to me and I was like, hmm, maybe this girl is crossing line, or you know. Maybe I should talk to her. So I spoke to her, I told her, this story is not sweet without name, let's call her Ebony. I mean, since she was a sex worker, we might as well call her Ebony Rhymes, right? So, I told her, Ebony, this thing you're doing, I don't understand. You came here to help out with the house and like, I think I'm going to give you designated phone time. Anyway, if you don't know how to limit your phone usage, especially when it concerns the baby or when it's affecting the baby, then I think we might have to make rules surrounding the use of this phone because I expect you when you're working with me to like, not use your phone mindlessly, just be mindful of the baby's cry, pay attention to the baby. If you're carrying the baby, just drop the phone, you know, stuff like that. I had told her stuff like that, thinking I'm dealing with a normal person that will totally understand. She actually did not argue with me, so I didn't think much of it. She said, oh, that she's so sorry that she would not know, she did not know that the phone was distracting her like that. You know, she had never had that kind of phone before, so she just like getting carried away and she just enjoying it. I was like, okay, Ebony, no problem. I quickly noticed that Ebony was actually taking really long showers with her phone so you know like how we'll be preparing breakfast and i'll say oh go and shower later i'll shower let me just stay with the baby like she can stay there two hours if i leave her but usually after like the 30 45 minute mark i'll usually call her and be like hey what's going on like what are you still doing there and she'll be like oh auntie sorry i was using the toilet but i'll be out soon you know and so i was like it's normal now but the bathroom breaks or the showers ended up becoming longer and longer and longer even to the extent that we we're going to the church and my husband actually noticed that this girl was taking forever to get ready how can we be ready before her and i found myself despite having a help i ended up still carrying my baby most of the time like i never got a break and like the whole point of getting a living nanny was so that she could help out with the baby responsibility funny enough like cooking i could get through it because i mean it's not consistent like you just cook and go and rest but you see that carrying baby sometimes like you just need a nap and especially in that first trimester i was so unbelievably tired so the day that things actually got crazy the straw that broke the camel's back was the day that i was arranging clothes in my room and then i had my baby crying i was like ah, this guy don't deal like what is she doing and so i went to check on my baby just to find out that my baby was alone can you believe that? My baby was actually alone. And like, I know people do this all the time with baby monitors. I even have CCTV in my house. But like, I just have a thing because my daughter is just one. Like, I don't feel comfortable leaving her by herself. It's either I'm there or someone has to be there at all times. Or, you know, I transfer her to nap where I actually am. And so she knows this. I was like, okay, maybe she's in the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and lo and behold, she was not there. Imagine my shock when I discovered that she wasn't in the bathroom either. I just picked up my baby. I thought, okay, maybe she went to do something downstairs. And I kept yelling her name, Ebony, Ebony, where are you? Ebony, Ebony, where are you? After like two minutes of hysterically yelling her name, she finally ran upstairs and was like, you know, heart beating and everything, her phone in hand. She had not even locked the phone. In that moment, I don't know what came over me. I'm not even going to lie, I lost my cool. I, I went absolutely crazy. I said, Ebony, why would you leave my baby alone like this? You didn't even tell me. You could have told me to keep an eye on her. You could have said, Auntie, please check on her. I'm going to do something downstairs. What were you doing downstairs? Say she went to spread clothes. I said, for how long? How can you be spreading clothes that you did not hear me? Also, you guys, like, there's no way she was spreading clothes for that long, okay? And, yeah. I don't even remember putting any clothes in the washer. So I don't even think there was any clothes in the washer. But even if she washed her own clothes, like there's no reason why she should have left my baby unattended without at least letting me know. That was my anger in that moment of time. I felt really obsessed with her, like at the end of the day. But one thing about hiring helps, living in you or whatever, is that you know at the end of the day, you're the one responsible for your child, okay? And because everything truly seems so shady, I asked her, I said, if you were truly hanging cloth or you went to spread cloth, like why then are you with your phone? Why is the phone light? Why was the phone light on when you came upstairs? And why was your phone open? It means you were actually pressing your phone and you weren't doing what she said like what were you actually doing downstairs she now said hey, auntie, that she's so sorry that she finished spreading clothes and there was no network so she went to the backyard 
to answer call. Say you went to the backyard to answer call. He said yes. I said you know what? Just give me the phone. If you see five, this girl wanted to slap me. She actually wanted to slap me like she was just boiling. Just <laughs> breathing so hard. And that was the moment I knew that I was onto something. Like something is really, really suspicious here. Like why would me just asking her for her phone warrant that sort of reaction? You know, it didn't make any sense. And I said, okay, now maybe I should push this further. And I told her, you know what, I'm going to keep this phone while you reflect on your actions and tell me if what you did was good. And honestly, this phone has just been causing you a lot of distraction and I didn't want to take it away. So I gave you the benefit of the doubt. But honestly, I don't know. I feel like you've abused that um, privilege that I gave you. And at this point, I think it's just fair game that I actually take the phone away from you. And because of that reaction, I was even more certain that something was suspicious. I was like, no, I, I was not even going to listen. Like, she should just give me the phone. And that, in fact, that she should open the phone. Oh, um, mommy and this girl almost fought too. At this point, I was carrying my baby. So, and it was just two of us in the house. I was a bit scared, but she's 18 years old. When it comes down to it, I'll drop my baby and she will not be able to beat me. Like, what's the worst that will happen? I told her to give me back the phone and she should open it. So, this girl opened it. I told her to go away. She left. And so, I just locked myself in my daughter's room with my daughter. And you guys, the first place that I went to was the recently deleted. And if you know what I saw in this recently deleted folder, let me just tell you something. If you think someone is hiding something, check their recently deleted folder. Because especially if they are, they don't know that you're going to check their phone, they're not going to clear their recently deleted folder. There's going to be all the juicy stuff in there. And lo and behold, in the deleted folder, I saw all kinds of eh, corn photos, like titties out, down there, even like in the bathroom, like wild poses. <laughs> my head and I started thinking, does this girl have a boyfriend? I feel like I don't hear her talking to her boyfriend, but then again, maybe she does it in secret. But in my in my face, she does not have a boyfriend. Even if she had a boyfriend, it was nothing like that I noticed. So I was really like, ah, ah. what my eyes saw in this girl's phone. What my even as it is something year old woman, I've never seen that kind of thing in my whole life. And the worst part was that, like, even videos of her touching herself, like self-pleasure videos. Hey, so I now, I now said, wait, first of all, first of all, if this girl is taking all these pictures, it definitely can be for herself. And a lot of them seem like not something you're sending to one person. I don't know, it just seemed like something you would share on a platform. You know, if you're taking it just for yourself, I feel like it would look different, maybe like home style. But it was as if she was trying to post, like, an only only fans actor or something like that like she was trying to market herself you know and in some of them it turns out that this girl was even wearing my clothes like she wear my clothes like my bra like different things the bra was even big for her so i don't even understand like my shorts ha ah what my eyes saw i cannot really tell you people i saw a lot of things like my eye i can't even describe all the things i saw it was just wild to me anyway so I said, you know what, I need to digest this content. I immediately called my friend. I told her, like, because I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. So I called my friend. I said, ah, this is what is happening in my house. So I don't know what to do. What do you suggest? My friend said I should check her WhatsApp. That maybe I'll be, I, should, I will not be surprised that she's actually sending these videos, like, on a platform or something. I said, okay, no problem. So I actually adamantly checked her WhatsApp. And I saw that this girl was on one platform like that. It seemed like the platform was filled with people just sending like hey i'm this and i can do this for you it was basically a platform where people were advertising themselves and then people can you know pay them to share full videos or people can pay them for them to come visit them basically an only fans kind of an only fans or you know, i don't even know what to call this platform but basically you share your naked pictures and people would share their own like details like the men would say oh i'm this i'm this years old i'm looking for this and the ladies will you know put like a little profile saying that they're this and they can take care of them or call me and she will put her whole pay everything i did not know that this girl was a, 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 a part-time harlot I wasn't quite sure what to do because honestly speaking, this girl was over 18. Like I know Nigeria, we frown against all these things, but like she's over 18 and I really didn't want to overstep. Okay, she has parents, she's, I'm not her parents, but like I already felt bad that I took the phone from her and then I saw this, I didn't know what to do. One thing was clear to me though, she was not going to stay in my house again. I actually waited for my husband to come back because I felt, ah, I'm not going to question this girl by myself, who I need support. I waited for my husband to get back, I came out of the room, I tell her if nothing happened, like I just put the phone away, 
I tried to just play the long game, but let me tell you, I'm boiling inside. I literally had so many questions for myself. How did I miss this? You know this girl is young. How did I not expect something like this to be happening when she was so glued to her phone? Like, what else makes someone so glued to their phone? If not something like maybe relationship, there has to be a reason. Social media. This girl, I've not given her her salary once. She always asked me to send it to her family or that she save it for her. I buy her her toiletries, so I didn't think much of it. But like now on the second thought, maybe all these things were happening under, them, under my nose and I just didn't notice it. I, I didn't even know if to tell my husband what happened because at the end of the day, when I just felt like it wasn't his place to handle it, but I just needed the security of knowing that she was here. Before this girl was my, my family, me and my child, you, you know, if she catches on that, I know what happened. Before we continue with the story, wake is on. But anyway, it turns out I had someone who was doing local only fans in my house, under my nose, carrying my baby, and I had no idea. Hi, God, I didn't know how to feel. I think the saddest part was even when she was shaking her bum bum. There was this particular video where she was shaking her bum bum in the bathroom. And I guess she had my baby in there so that she would not cry. And yeah, she was shaking her bum bum in my shorts. In my shorts and bra. And I don't know who she sent it to, but my baby was there. I could hear my baby's voice in the background. She was telling my baby, don't cry, Joe. Just wait for me and I'm coming. Hi, my child was witnessing such acts. Ah, 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 that one pain me. I'm not even gonna lie. So I called her and I said, This is what I found on your phone. Can you explain? Because I'm not understanding. She said that she doesn't know what I'm talking about. I was like, what do you mean you don't know what I'm talking about? I found naked pictures, I found pornographic content. I found the platform where you were selling yourself online. And honestly, I'm not sure what you want to get out of it, but I just let me ask you because maybe there's another explanation to it. You know what this girl told me? Tell me wrong, I saw what I saw. And that she's an adult, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's her choice, what she does with her phone. I say, your phone? I say, yes, that I've already bought the phone for her, so it's completely her choice what she does with it and I truly don't have a say. I say, eh, eh, so I should stop. Like, basically, she told me I should mind my business. This 18 year old girl I hired, like to work for me as a living nanny, to carry my one year old baby, I help me a little around the house. Then I should mind my own business and I don't have a say in what she does with her phone. <sighs> At that moment, I was perplexed. But thank God my husband was back. So I, I just knew that there was nothing she was going to do to me. I told her, okay, that her parents, that she, she told me she wanted to come here and save money for school. Like, what is the reason why she's selling herself online? Are they paying her enough? Like, how much are they paying her? Like, she wouldn't tell me, but like, if I really wanted to know, they pay her at least 5,000. At least 5,000. <laughs> I was just like, ah, 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 ah. I don't know if it's children that is disturbing this girl or the fact that she thinks she knows it all. You're prostituting yourself online for five thousand do you know how crazy that sounds i don't even know what blew my mind more the price or the boldness of this young girl honestly all of them are admirable because like as a young girl i can't imagine myself now i'm adding i'm adding jara to the story by the way the writer did not send this in well i can't imagine myself as a young girl at 18 even if i don't have fear selling myself online and even if i am like doing it for just Five thousand naira. I feel like the Ubo girl in me would never agree, would know better. The Ubo girl in me would be like, yo, you should know better than this. What is five thousand naira? Can you sell yourself just for five thousand naira? I just I just feel like that's what my Ibo self would tell me. So now that I had like we had had that conversation, I actually thought of like how to proceed and I thought, hmm, I told her, would you like me to tell your parents what happened here? She said, well, that's my business. If I want to, I can tell them. In my mind, I said, hmm, this one is like, she has been doing this thing since home. It's like, this man knowingly brought me part-time Mashaw to do work. Maybe because they've embarrassed her in her village and she's now decided to come to my house. For some weird reason, I didn't feel like that was the case. I just thought maybe, I have a younger sister, okay, and she's in her 20s now, early 20s, and I thought this could be my sister. If it was my sister going astray like this, what would I do? So after much thoughts, I actually sat her down. I explained to her the dangers of sending people videos and pictures of yourself. I didn't know how else to explain it to her, but I just basically told her that they could blackmail you with these pictures. Look at the bounce. It, like, Tell me that you see a girl wearing this hair, you're not gonna be like, hello, please, where did you get your hair from? Okay, so I realized that this babe was actually unrepentant and like, at first I thought, hey, she's my little sister, I should give her another chance, people make mistakes, but the truth of the matter is that I just couldn't understand the lifestyle, like, it's just not me and it can never be me, and yeah, 
like I struggle to understand it. That's just the honest truth. I didn't know how to deal with the situation. Uh, eventually, I was like, I didn't want to tell her parents because I didn't want to get her in trouble. But I had to face the harsh reality that if this was my child, I would actually want to know. And so I compromised by telling her agent. I let her agent know the next morning. I kept the phone for myself. And then I told her agent, I told the agent that, you know, this is what is happening. Are you aware that this is how this girl is? Oh, this other part just blew me away. Sorry, guys, I was caught off guard by that side part. But if you want the wig, again, you'll find it up here and also down here. But anyway, I eventually told her agent and I told her agent never ever to find me somebody of that age. Maybe she still needed to be wild, like she needed to get it out of her system and it wasn't her fault, it was my fault. But in the end, the day the agent came to pick her, she begged and begged and begged for a second chance. But I was just so worried. I didn't want my daughter to be influenced by such behavior. Maybe next now, if she has my daughter there and she's doing all those kind of content, my daughter will sit and try to emulate it. And I just didn't want that kind of influence. And I would just rather she be with her parents and they figure it out. What I did was it wrong by taking the phone from her and going through her phone, especially considering that she was an 18 year old? Um, is it wrong to hire an 18 year old person? Because again, they're an adult, they can make decisions for themselves. Just let me know in the comment section. If you're a family member, say prayers here too. And please don't forget to share your thoughts down below. If it was you, would you have left the girl in your house? Personally, I don't think I would. I will just feel weird after seeing all that. And I just feel like people don't really change. You probably just go outside and continue. But what do I do? Bye.